What comes to mind when you think about what evil is? We live in a day in a culture where we've lost the ability to define what evil is. There are very few things I would still say left man will point to and say, this is evil. Even atheists, when they look at something as terrible as September 11th, they'll point at it and say, that is evil. But then when it comes around to their own life, they'll deny that there's a truth. They will not say that such an evil or a thing like evil even exists. And the reason is because they do not know and they do not fear God. They don't care. That's because that we have a relationship with evil that we're content to have. We don't mind evil in our own lives. The truth is, if we were afraid of God, if we were rightly feared Him to know who He is, we would turn from evil. But Scripture says elsewhere that we suppress the truth. Because look around you. Open your eyes and behold, God speaks through every single thing you're looking at. Through your fellow classmates, through the skies above, you look at the trees and behold the wonder of God. But no, we would rather suppress that and give greed to something else. We would rather say it's all by chance and accident. But if you were to go out and look at the ocean and stand in awe, if you were to go to the highest mountain ranges and, and drop your mouth in amazement, how much more ought you to be in awe of the God that made them? How much more ought you to tremble against the God who founded the world that puts you together? And yet you still hold on to your evil heart. And it might sound harsh, but it's what Scripture declares to be true. But if you can hear God's voice today, if you can hear this word, know that there is the same God. He sent His Son that you might have redemption. That if you too might fear God and hate evil and turn from it, that there is hope and salvation in Jesus Christ. That there was a man who perfectly feared God in every way. And he was reverent. He was full of awe that the God it's, it was his father. And he did not do one thing that was not to the complete obedience and glory of God. It was the man, Jesus Christ. He lived a perfectly good life. And if even were to examine him, we would tremble for his perfection out of his perfect obedience for love of fellow man and love for God. It's real easy when we think, have we done a good job obeying God's commandments and doing them? And people will say, well, yes, I've done a good job. Well, do you love your neighbor? Well, certainly. So then I'll ask them this question. What then if your neighbor were to come up to you, he were to punch you down and grab your wallet, and then you saw him the next day? What kind of love would you have for him? Would that love forgive him? Would that love be able to forgive him and move on and treat him the same way as if he had done nothing wrong? That is the type of love that Jesus had for his fellow man, that when they were grabbing hold of him, plucking out his beard, dragging him off to be crucified, what did he say? What was this love that Christ had for sinful men? He said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Is that the type of love that you have for your fellow man? Because if you fall short of that, you do not love your neighbor as yourself. And what about your love for God? Christ said the greatest commandment is to love your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Have you truly loved God the way He ought to be loved? Is every moment of your life like Christ consumed with what must I do to please the God that made me? If it's not so, then you do not have a perfect love of God. But listen again to what it says. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Pride.